Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am riding this the BMW F750 GS and straight away let me tell you that this motorcycle looks really very cool and I've ridden the older model but this new one is an entirely different league altogether I mean just look at it doesn't it look gorgeous now the headlight is obviously asymmetrical in typical BMW design speak however the S1000 RR the latest one doesn't get it, it looks like a Pulsar RS200 unfortunately but that aside look at it I mean the DRL is here very sweet looking beak isn't very protruding either and it gets regular telescopic folks 41 mm now the f850 gs gets wider upside down folks 43 mm but today we're talking about the 750 so let's focus faster let's focus led indicators beautiful design i mean look at it f750 gs written here bmw logo here and everything looks so nice on this motorcycle at the front we get a 19 inch wheel this is a 110 80 section tire and as you can see obviously it looks gorgeous reflectors here i mean the tires look gorgeous well that wasn't called for vessel but yeah i am saying gorgeous because i am just so mesmerized by the design here and this golden color which looks really very cool below the engine you get this bash plate to obviously protect when you go off roading and i mean i can't keep stopping when it comes to places in terms of design because it looks so beautiful this motorcycle the attention to detail is massive this is the exhaust which has been hinged here and you know what you can see this 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 i mean the mounts are placed you can quickly mount your luggage on this motorcycle that's how it's done in fact you can also mount a top box here at the rear single piece seat 815 mm seat height which makes it accessible both to short as well as tall riders and this is the heart of the matter the design is so beautiful the color treatment everything looks so well done okay you can see the springs here this gets a main stand obviously and the pegs are center set slightly front side i would say and obviously this treatment here on the brake lever to give you more grip when you go off-roading but this is not about off-roading this motorcycle because this is more about road riding and this is the rear tire which happens to be a 150 70 17 and these are bridgestone battle axe adventure tires and the exhaust looks nice the rear also looks beautiful you get these led lights here and uh, if i have to nitpick i would say maybe 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 this motorcycle shouldn't have been so huge because for shorter riders it actually scares you off however let me tell you it actually suits short riders i mean yeah pedal stop going crazy okay here is the side stand and the attention to detail is massive it gets a quick shifter both for up as well as down shifts and you can see that here you can see this canister it gets electronic suspension adjustment at the rear so that's the reason why you have this canister obviously steel braided lines that's a monoshock suspension and let's quickly turn on the motorcycle so here we go we turn it on this is how it turns on really very cool the way this gs written comes abs pro it's saying this is the cluster now this cluster is very advanced now obviously you have to pay extra for it it will be fifty thousand actually but there is so much information on offer now look at this yeah it gets an idrive like controller here so if i get into menu and there is so many things here inside this menu so you know i need to push it like this to go through various settings i can go to settings i can go to telephone i can go into media i can get into navigation i can get into my vehicle now if i get into my vehicle i need to press this and look at that display it's telling you the temperature it's telling you the distance to empty it's telling you the battery voltage as well so very slick system definitely looks very nice as well and you know this is the onboard computer which is telling you so much information I mean motorcycles don't offer you so much information this one does it'll tell you exactly when is appointment for your service as well as the remaining distance to get to your service by telling the appointment is next year <laughs> in 2020 after almost a year or so and if i want to go back i press this menu button up and this is my vehicle there's navigation click on this get into navigation action not possible check connection no, i need to connect my bluetooth same thing with media and telephone unless until your phone is connected you can't really use it getting into settings vehicle settings system settings so many things are there over here it is crazy you can set a lot of parameters in this console it is so freaking loaded it is wow auto daytime light as well and you know i can just click down to you know browse through this system this is how slick it is what a beautiful system i absolutely adore how bmw has made this beautiful looking screen which reminds me of the idrive controller this one actually reminds me of the idrive controller and the system reminds me of the idrive system on bmw cars 
However, if you want to browse through this top thing, all you have to do is click this button up. It's telling you total kilometers. It's telling you trip one, trip two, as well as real time mileage, which happens to be 18.1 kilometers per liter. Keep going. It'll tell you the riding time as well, and there's also distance to empty and how much time you have ridden this motorcycle. Yeah, there is so much information on offer. Obviously, it has got the distance to empty as well. Right now, it's saying 93 kilometers for distance to empty. This is the fuel level of the motorcycle. Nice big tachometer, speedometer here. What's the temperature? 36 degrees outside. Automatic headlights and time is here telltale lights are here now you can obviously turn off abs this is the abs turn off button this is to adjust the suspension you can get into dynamic or you can get into road right now i've just kept it into dynamic and you know what this is for the cruise control so you can just slide it ahead like this and you can go up and down to set the cruise this is to turn on the light this is the hazard light switch and this is obviously for the indicators this is the horn which is nice and loud this is to get into mode so you can get into dynamic there are four modes enduro rain and road as well i'll keep it in dynamic for the moment this is the engine start button and everything feels so premium look at the way the master cylinder has been finished at the front i mean wow it's so beautifully concealed the mirrors are a little ugly in terms of shape but obviously they do a decent job let's get into neutral right away and right now we are in neutral let's turn on the motorcycle there it rose to life and since it is now turned on you can see the lights bmw led oh my god it is so bright and obviously looks nice as well meanwhile let's turn on the indicators too so here we are with the indicators and the indicators flashing oh god the light is too powerful it's just too freaking powerful and oh my god the exhaust is like really very loud but how is it to sit on well it is quite comfy a motorcycle naturally because this is a bmw after all and here we are i can actually move it around without any effort whatsoever so let's wrap the motor yeah it does sound nice obviously it does let's rev it once again here we go all right let's get riding right away all right here we go uh, the acceleration is quite fast now this one is powered by 853 cc parallel twin engine but it kind of sounds like a v twin because it has a rumble of a v twin and that's because it has a 270 degree firing order and of course the motor is kind of smooth but feels rough as you push it near the red line and when it does feel rough you can feel a lot of that on the seat as well as on the handlebar because yes being a twin cylinder engine motorcycle it should be quite refined and it is but somehow in the top end you can feel some roughness but there's good amount of punch in the mid range it kind of lacks in the low end which is a bit disappointing and you really have to push the motor hard and fast through the mid range and the top end is really fab it screams to its rather short 8 and a half thousand rpm red line the gearbox is super smooth this 6 speed unit is as smooth as butter and offers very crisp shifts and of course the quick shifter works brilliantly well as well and while this motorcycle is known as a 750 look at the weight red lines under 9000 rpm yeah so while it is known as a 750 it actually is the same engine as the 850 so like i told you 853 cc but they have reduced the power and torque and there is no difference in terms of hardware the only difference is in terms of ecu tuning this one produces 77 horsepower and 83 newton meters of torque a full 18 horsepower less than the f850 gs while torque output is lesser by 9 newton meters which is kind of disappointing because why should the road going version of this motorcycle have less zoom i simply do not understand yes there's a lot of wind blast as well because this small wind screen does a very poor job of containing wind but get into the gas any moment and there's good amount of punch in the mid range and suddenly this is a very fun and fast motorcycle to ride and in terms of top speed it should clearly do 190 km per hour 0 to 100 km per hour should take around 4 and a half seconds which makes it decently quick and it has four riding modes on offer what do these four riding modes do well they obviously alter the power delivery because power delivery declines by another 12 horsepower in rain mode making this even less powerful than what it actually should be in standard format now while riding in the city you will realize that it could have done with more punch lower down but the bike feels so light and agile it's such an easy job to take a u turn on this machine all right here we go into first gear driving the motor and off we go It 
it is beautiful the way the red line comes in and how it blinks on the tachometer and it remains stable at high speeds it's not advised to turn off traction control i mean traction control can be turned off but once you turn off traction control trust me it kind of slides too much because the way the mid range pulls all of a sudden can get a bit uneasy for you meanwhile the brakes are stuck Fenders, I mean, really superb. The way this motorcycle stops is amazing. Yes, there's some amount of nose dive under heavy braking, but the brakes are very well calibrated, offer very sure foot stopping power as well, and give so much feel and feedback on the lever as well. And these are adjustable levers, by the way. Both the levers are adjustable. So when we talk about the riding modes on offer, well, let me tell you one thing: dynamic is of course the best, and there you saw a little bit of slide because the power comes in very fast. Traction kicked in and cut power. If there was no traction control, well, you know you have to be really scared to handle the power because there is good amount of kick in the pants wheel in the mid range, and the top end absolutely screams on this machine. So yes, dynamic mode makes the suspension on the stiffer side. On road mode, the suspension is on the softer side. So adaptive suspension on this motorcycle, and with the soft suspension, it is extremely smooth over bad roads. It actually glides, but it's just too soft for my liking. Meanwhile, right now it is too hard for my liking. So yeah, it's kind of extreme ends. However, the ride quality is brilliant. It heats up a lot. Yes, the bike heats up a lot, and I can feel a lot on my legs already. So the difference between rain and of course dynamic mode is the fact that power is contained and traction control well it is obviously very intervening as such all the time but for the most part let me tell you that this motorcycle does a great job now enduro mode is for off roading only and in terms of off roading ability the F850 does a great bit that's a better job not only does it has more oomph on offer it has bigger wheels 21 inches spoke wheels it's more off road centric this is more road going and yes there could have been more punch on offer from this motor because for this price which is quite a lot at rupees 15 lakhs for the standard version and there's a pro low suspension version which comes for 16.6 lakhs and this one which happens to be the pro comes for 16.85 lakhs and if you talk about the F850 GS well it costs 2 lakhs more exactly for each of the variants so again it is also available in three variants so how do i pit all these motorcycles i would say the pro low suspension is obviously the motorcycle for those with shorter heights because the ground clearance is lesser there's no main stand on offer the pro has all the goodies but this one is optional tft display screen which is priced around rupees 60000 50 to 60000 rupees so it is an expensive motorcycle but it is so well engineered handling is great it feels eager around the corners it offers great feel and feedback as well it actually feels light and nimble on its feet which is just such a brilliant thing and it's not really a bike for the city and in terms of off road ability well yeah really you would opt for the F850 GS if you want to go off road because that's where it totally shines love the sound from this motor love everything about this bike i mean i love it so much i would want one it is so much better than the triumph tiger the tiger obviously has more power but this handles better than the tiger any day it doesn't scrape its foot pegs around the corners because there is more cornering clearance on offer you know in the tiger it will scrape its foot pegs around the corners if you try to ride hard and fast so clearly the bmw has an upper hand on the triumph but in terms of sales and service yeah triumph has an upper hand currently here we go love the way the motor pulls it absolutely screams for 7500 rpm all the way to the red line tank reserve level reach right to the next filling station it says okay fuel economy is between 18 to 20 km per liter this is a 15 liter fuel tank and overall i give a big thumbs up to bmw's f750 gs certainly a great bike although i kind of feel it should have had the power of the f850 So guys this is my review of BMW's fantastic F750 GS and if you like this video you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel I will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye So by the way it has this charging port here now this is not a standard one this is a more expensive one and you know you have to opt for something different to actually put a slot there to charge and you can see there it also gets a steering dampener yeah there steering is really very sharp the geometry is such i mean it offers such crisp handling i love it absolutely what a motorcycle guys what a motorcycle the more i ride it the more i discover how amazing it is bmw really needs to push this aggressively because it can eat into the triumph tiger's thunder anyways time to refill fuel bye bye